and welcome to my second tutorial on using audio to control parameters in effects and on layers. Um, this is the what I call the more elegant approach in that if you have multiple parameters that you need to control you don't really want a whole load of layers in your timeline and we can create one control layer and we can apply expression controllers to that control layer that are linked to the individual parameters that we are controlling. The workmanlike approach will work for simple solutions but you end up with a whole load of layers and it's hard to manage. This approach will give you one layer and all those bits and pieces in that one layer but it might be a little bit more confusing for people who aren't used to using expressions. Okay so I've got my layer, you've probably seen it before, it's just a shape layer that rotates and changes over 10 seconds. And I've got my audio, I need to drag my audio and bring it in. This is free sound booth music which I've just uh, outputted from sound booth and uh, if we have a quick listen to that, hitting the full stop key on the numpad. Okay, so that's the music and now we need to select the layer, go to animation, keyframe assistant and the only option we have is convert audio to keyframes. Now I had a look at this before in the previous tutorial and the only one that we actually need to use of these three effects, the left channel, the right channel and both channels is the right channel so I'm going to select the left and right and hit delete, get rid of those and I've got both channels but this time I'm not going to apply an expression to it. Instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a controller layer which is going to be a null. You can either do a null from up here, layer new null object or you can use the keyboard shortcut Control alt shift y or command option shift y for mac and there we have a new null object and I'm going to rename it immediately hit return and rename controller and that's my controller layer brilliant now I can select that layer and I can apply some effects controls to it I can go up to effects expression controls and go and take a slider and immediately I can rename that slider now we know that there's two things we want to control we want to control the stroke width so this will flash on and off with the beat and we want to control a glow which we want to apply to the shape layer so that when it flashes on it's that little bit more impressive so we can rename this first one glow glow intensity and hit return now we have a slider and the slider goes from 0 to 100 it really doesn't matter but if ever you want to edit these values you can actually right click on the 0 here and you can choose edit value and then you can say the beginning is zero and the end we can make four if we wanted. It doesn't really matter in this particular example because it's going to be controlled by whatever's coming out from this audio layer here. Now what we need to do is create an expression for the slider which is a different expression from the workmanlike approach I showed in the previous tutorial. It's similar but there's one major difference. Okay what we need to do is alt click the slider stopwatch so that we are creating an expression and the expression is going to be very similar up to a point so we need to write linear open bracket and this is the difference rather than writing value because we're just controlling the value of what we're doing we're going to take that value from the audio amplitude layer from our slider so what we do is we take our pick whip from the expression that we are creating and we drag it down to the audio slider and we let go and that is exactly the same as saying value Remember in the previous one we were taking the value of this audio slider, whatever value it had coming out was the value that we were going to be monitoring and adjusting, we've done the same again. And We can hit the comma key and now we need to decide what's the minimum value and the maximum value. Now in the previous tutorial we knew that anything below 15 we wanted everything off, so we can click 15, comma, and anything above 20 we wanted it at maximum, so we can do 20, comma. And we know that when we have glow applied that the glow intensity has a value of 0 to 4. So we go 0, comma, 4, close brackets. And now what we're saying is linear and then use another layer in this comp and that layer is called audio amplitude and the effect is the both channels effect. Whatever value is coming out of here, of this slider here, when it is below 15 we want our intensity to be at 0 and when it is above 20 we want it to be at 4 and anything between 15 and 20 can be between 0 and 4 so we hit return on our numpad and we've applied the expression but we haven't done anything yet what we actually need to do now is choose our shape layer and apply the effect so we effect 
and we want stylize glow and like last time what we're going to do immediately is we're going to knock up the radius a bit so it looks quite impressive when it comes on I know 50 60 whatever you want to do it, it really doesn't matter and then we're going to apply the expression to the glow intensity so alt click glow intensity so that an expression is being created we can pull up our panel so we can see everything here so here is our glow intensity here and then we've got the stopwatch for glow intensity and all we need to do is take it up to our slider our glow intensity slider let go and what we're saying is glow intensity slider you are controlling the glow intensity of the effect let go hit return on the number pad and now we've actually done what we aim to do let's drag that down and let's have a little look with the RAM preview okay so we've done the first one brilliant now we can go to our controller layer and we see that we've got the glow intensity effect we can minimize that but what we can do is we can take it and we can duplicate it to control our strokes so control D command D to duplicate it and instantly let's rename it hit return and call this stroke width and hit return so now we have the stroke width however if you remember from the last one the stroke width was different to the glow the glow is 0 to 4 but the stroke width if we go down to stroke width his stroke open up stroke and you'll see that the stroke width actually is 9 at the moment so the range that we want to control is 0 to 9 okay so let's open it up open up the slider and there is the stroke width expression all we need to change is the end figure because we're not going to go from 0 to 4 because that would give us a very thin stroke we're going from 0 to 9 so change the 4 to 9 and then what we're effectively saying is okay it's chain it's linear it's straightforward it's not going to follow an exponential curve it's just going to happen straight away if you like and we're looking for a layer in this comp which is called audio amplitude and whatever is coming out from the both channel slider I want you to look at it and if it's below 15 I want you to map it to 0 and if it's above 20 I want you to map it to 9 and if it's between 15 and 20 it's going to be between 0 and 9 and again we can hit return so just one more thing to do we now need to put an expression on the stroke width itself so let's open this up maximum let's go to stroke width alt click stroke width get the pick whip and grab it up to our stroke width controller slider let go hit return on our number pad and let's reset our workspace and do a round preview okay so we've achieved our goal and here's our project we have one controller layer we have two controllers we can look at those controllers both controlled by effects and if we've got any more parameters that we want to control so we add more effects to our shape layer that can all be controlled from the controller layer and we can have the controllers mounting up in here one layer lots of controllers easy to find as opposed to rifling through lots of different layers trying to find which is which well I hope you found this version useful my name's Andrew Davis, and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.